All right. So welcome to the NEPA scene podcast. Finally, after over a year, we're finally back uh, with our first live episode. So you can see we had a little uh, some technical issues. So sorry, we're coming in uh, a little late today. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll have that figured out very soon. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Accelerator Building in downtown Wilkes-Barre in uh, our new office. Uh, I'm Rich Howells. I'm the founder and editor of NEPA Scene. And tonight we're here with Scranton Alternative Rock Band University Drive. Uh, they just got back from a coast-to-coast -coast tour supporting Cold. Uh, so we're going to hear all their best stories from the road, playing legendary venues like uh, Whiskey A Go Go and The Machine Shop over the last two months. We're going to talk about what it takes for a local band to tour, what they learned along the way, uh, making fans across the country, uh, their new members, uh, recording uh, their upcoming album at Eight Days a Week Studios, uh, writing personal and emotional songs, uh, creating their first music videos, uh, what's next for the band, and much, much more. So please stay tuned uh, to our uncensored conversation, and we would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Uh, on your um, social media platform of choice. We're streaming on all different platforms. Uh, that's also something new as well. Usually we just kind of did uh, Facebook Live and sometimes YouTube. Now we're kind of all over the place. So <laughs> wherever you're tuning in from, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please stay tuned for uh, the full hour uh, and uh, participate in the conversation. Uh, it's much more fun when you guys do. Uh, so before we dive in, uh, I want to thank our sponsor, Special Guest, who has uh, provided the equipment and funds and everything. Uh, Special Guest allows anyone, anywhere to hire live entertainment on demand. The app removes the friction from talent booking by facilitating the discovery, communication, agreement, and payment process. Uh, working with the booker and the artist to make sure they both get what they need to make events happen at venues, house parties, or wherever. Uh, whatever you're looking for uh, live entertainment or you're a performer of any kind looking to get hired, uh, visit specialguestapp.com to see what they can do for you. And thank you so much to Special Guests for sponsoring us and making the show possible. The ad read is definitely the best time to grab a drink. So hopefully you, you did and uh, we can jump into this. So uh, could you please uh, maybe introduce yourselves and what your position is in the band so that everybody at home knows who you guys are? Sure. Uh, my name's Ed Cuzo and I sing and play guitar in the band. <clears throat> Tony Krishka, drummer. Uh, I'm Angelo Marzelli, and I play guitar, and I sing in University Drive. I'm Mark Naples, and I play guitar in University Drive. I'm Ryan Gridadaria, and I play bass, and I yell. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good at yelling. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for those who maybe aren't familiar with you guys and haven't seen our, our many, many uh, wonderfully written articles that you should have read, uh, I did repost them on our Facebook page. So if you haven't read them yet, please do. But uh, can you give us a little background on who you guys are, how long you've been doing it, uh, you know, how you've been around, that sort of thing? Yeah. So, um, well, <clears throat> we've been a band now going on seven years, and uh, the band started off as kind of like a little passion project, a personal passion project, where it was kind of like a one-man band sort of deal. And the original concept was it being a collective of musicians coming in and out to kind of help. Like, okay, we have a show. Mm -hmm. And I need musicians for this show, so I'm just going to grab a couple people, and that'll be the band for for that that particular show. But mm -hmm. when we made the second record clear, it started to really solidify more as being an actual band of people and and uh, a working group. And especially now, after going through the process of making of just about finishing our third record um, and doing this this national tour now it's a complete band hmm. so yeah but we've been we've done a lot this uh third record is coming out and this national tour we were on uh the 2019 broken human tour and just just like making music with, with my pals <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you have your first two albums uh, were uh, on, off, reset, and clear, and those were pretty well received in the area. Clear was named the album of the year at the 2019 Steamtown Music Awards. So, uh, what do you think about those songs that uh, that people connected with? Well, uh, I think just me speaking personally, as far as the clear material, I think it's hard to not. I think it's very hard to not connect to that stuff because most people have gone through some form of grief or another whether it's a breakup or 
or losing a loved one of some of, in some way, shape or form. And if it does, if it hasn't happened yet, then it's going to happen. So I think the material is easily relatable in that sense. But that record was just a way more moody ride and just uh, it was just a, a way more vibey a whole vibey thing but i call that one the concept record that's i mean that's what it was it was just more mm -hmm. of like an artsy take and even when we kind of brought that record out on the first tour that we went out on it was like the whole show was was different that was mm -hmm. based around it you know it was a a really slow gradual start and a lot of people weren't really super into it <laughs> when we when we first did it when we were out of the the area mm -hmm. but um but that's that's kind of it as far as as far as the record. It's just a moody, uh, a moody, emotional, super emotional ride, you know. But I think I think that's why it's easily relatable. And I, I think the first one for me too is like the whole reason I wanted to be in the band at some point. I remember I remember buying it with you yeah. at yeah. Joe's studio. We were like eighteen. <laughs> so we were in a metal band and we both went to Joe JL Studios and we bought on off reset. I was just like, ah, oh, did I remember how to be in that band? Oh, yeah. <laughs> did I remember him like, uh, after our recording sessions, would show us like little snippets? Mm -hmm. be like, you gotta check out this guy at Kuzo. You gotta <laughs> so check, crazy. You gotta <laughs> listen to this guy and he'd play like little samples. He of the did stuff only in the way I know. He definitely did. Yeah, yeah. He showed us that and I went, oh my God, let me know when that record comes yeah. out. Because I need it. Like, yeah, I need to hear the it. full thing. Mm -hmm. And dude, we, we bought it right off. Like Joe was just pressing the records. That's so nice. Would you look at me now? <laughs> yeah, right? Right? <laughs> like, Ouch. That, that's a success story. Mm -hmm. I Yes. And now he sleeps next to me when we go. <laughs> best, best lateral move I've ever made. It's true. It's true. Well, you know, that leads into my next question was, you know, what made you guys want to be a part of this project? Uh, for me, I don't know. Um, speaking personally, when I was 18, I was just getting uh, out of, not out of metal. I still love metal music. I love heavy music. But I just was getting into bands like... Um, movements and basement and all these like underground almost wheezery mm -hmm. title fight and all those bands and stuff like that and then i heard that record because that's what was going on at the time and it kind of took me back to like almost like my roots but something new like i almost sang i'd probably over i think i went through two of those records when they came out <laughs> and i just like i knew all the songs i knew how to play them i literally looked up ed playing them live from some show at the art gallery mm -hmm. just to learn how to play the songs because i was like what chord is that that sounds dumb and it was dumb um, <laughs> It was, it was that's the secret. The that's secret. The secret. Of, the secret of the chords is they are actually <laughs> dumb. But I just connected. Like there were songs that, uh, like I can, I connected to at eighteen. You know, with an old girlfriend that we'd sing, and it was off of that record. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy. And now, like that's what's led me to be twenty five and still wanting to do it and leaving like I don't know a little imprint on something that I loved so much growing up too, which is kind of badass. Yeah. Oh yeah. What about you, gentlemen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was the same way for me as, like, both of these guys. Like, uh, I had met Ed before University Drive, like, came out on the scene, like, back in your social state days. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of my first, like, like I saw a social state, and I thought of it as how, like, we eventually thought of University Drive when the band came out. I was like, wow, these guys are awesome. Like, I, I just had not seen, like, anyone – that good in our area like in that moment and i was also i was young i was like 17 so it was also kind of the first time that i was even stepping into the like scranton music scene at all in the first place so mm. i didn't even really know like what bands were around at the time but but then uh like years passed and i hadn't even met any of you guys at that point but i don't know i feel like all musicians are the same like every, everyone's kind of like always looking for a way into something that they think is cool. It's like when you're in uh it's like pe people that are like trying to date other people. It's like, you, kind of, you know, you look around, you get to, you arrive to your bar, you scan the room, you're like, oh, that, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, that's how it is for musicians going out to see bands. It's like, you see a band that you love. And the, the awesome thing about musicians is it's like, you can play in multiple bands and it's not like, you know, it's just, that's just how it works. But uh, that's how it was like, a, you know, the, on a free set came out and it was like, that's a bit, that's a bit. I've, I said it since the day that I ever saw it play. I was like, that's a band I would want to be in. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so then, uh, you know, af after that, like you just kind of lurk until it's like <laughs> looking for your way in, but you know, not like actually, but it's just time passes. And I mean, everyone knows that bands works like, like bands always need some type of help and that's always changing. Like what that help is. And, uh, if you're just kind of in the right place at the right time, that's really just kind of, 
have the reason why literally all of us are here. Right Dude, I think speaking on that too, I was at the <laughs> release show for the clear release show. Yeah. And I got everybody like Ryan distortion pedals everything. and lights yeah. and stuff like that. I just wanted to be a part of it in some way. And shape, you still continue to do that. To this yeah. Point. And then, <laughs> then I ended up getting the offer to go out and do that first tour. You know what I mean? And yeah. I done mm-hmm. like in 2019. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, I decided I was a mm-hmm. little filling boy, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Just being around, you you kind of get interested and want to be a part of something in some way, shape, or form. So you, I don't know. Not that you, it's not even intentional. But sometimes you just like being around something you care about so much that you just mm-hmm. end up being at the right place. At the right just time. You know what I mean? Right. So, dude, I remember when you were saying you were like, "Yeah, you drives looking for another guitar player," and I went, "I play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like university drive." <laughs> dude, so to be in it now, like it really is just like your circle and like who you surround yourself with and what you're interested in. If you kind of like just project it into the universe and you're like, all right, I'm going to like do this and you hang around long enough. I feel like eventually like those things start to happen and you start Mm. to gravitate towards Mm -hmm. these people. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, it's crazy how things work, but yeah, super happy to be a part of this. Yeah. Mark, the first time that, that we like rendezvoused was you like, like hanging out at a university drive session, like filming and stuff like that. And uh, now you're in the band. Yeah, it's dude, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> it is weird. It's just yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. like all my friends that probably like. Thank God he's in there, so now we can shut up about them. <laughs> <laughs> like now I don't have to hear about dude, them anymore. Yeah. You guys hear that new song? <laughs> oh man, it's so crazy yeah. to hear all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? It's like everyone's stories. Like everyone has these crazy wild things mm-hmm. that have been going on that like no one else knew about. And then eventually they start to like manifest together and everybody crosses paths. I, I think all of it, I mean, I'm not, obviously I'm not speaking on your guys behalf, but I think all of it just comes down to like, just like-minded energy and people who really yeah. want to do. That was what I was going to say. I told Ed that, uh, cause obviously I'm new with the band, but, mm-hmm. um, when I told Ed the reason why I bought in, first and foremost, I've been seeing these guys play for years, but it was always for me, the energy on the stage, the camaraderie of the band, the mutual respect, the message Ed is spreading with his words, you know, cause people can write and just babble and, you know, but he has a message and it's beautiful. And, you know, it gets, you know, to the heart of, of people. You know, and that's it. And I bought in, you know, and I want it to be part of. Plus, the music is beautiful and it's challenging and it's everything I try to mm. to do with my career is always challenge myself to do something new and different. And the bands that I love, I hear in his music and I've always wanted to try to duplicate those bands like failure and stuff. Yeah, like, that. like I always tell them, you know, uh, now I get that opportunity. Plus, these guys are really good musicians, really good friends, and and even better humans and people. And that's important to surround yourself with good people. You know what I mean? Totally. Oh, so, thanks, that's man. That's it where we're at. Very sweet. It was yeah. So nice. it's all true. right. It was a yeah, well, now that I'm done kissing you all out. <laughs> <laughs> Continue Fuck these guys. Fuck yeah. yeah. these guys. Cheers for that. Oh man. Uh, in t- 2019, you guys uh, toured with Cold for the first time. Uh, so for those who aren't familiar at home, uh, they're known for songs like uh, Stupid Girl and Just Got Wicked and albums like uh, 13 Ways to Bleed on Stage and Year of the Spider. I'm sure many of you at home have those in their, your, uh, your CD collection somewhere. Um, their new stuff is great as well. So how did the opportunity come about to work with them for the first time? The, the, that part is the insane part because it, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. I've told this story a million times. <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense. The, the, um, we had, we had started, we had just released the clear record. And when we released that, I put a lot of time, I put a lot of time and energy into the promotion, the marketing of clear and trying to make, to ensure that it was just a, re- a success. Cause in my head, I was sincerely, I believe that that was probably gonna be the last big record that I worked on. I thought, okay, well now, now I'm just going to work on little singles here and there. Cause it was just such a fucked up time. You right. know, it was such a fucking crazy time for everybody in the band at the time too. It was crazy, <laughs> but we released that record. Our whole fucking local area couldn't have been sweeter and kinder about their reception to the record and what they felt as far as a connection to the record. 
And then out of nowhere, I'm literally at work painting a stairwell, like on like, I don't know, like on my stomach underneath the stairwell with a four inch roller painting it going, God, this shit sucks. And I get a, a text message from Nick Coyle saying, hey, would you have any interest in opening for cold when we go on the road? And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, because I've been like hoping for something like that my whole life. And it just so happened that it happened like at this really insane time in my life when I when I truly was ready to give up on the thing and was only doing the thing because I truly loved it mm -hmm. for no other reason. I never, when all this stuff started to happen, I never did it because I was like, okay, that's the goal. We have to make that happen. It was just because I fucking love doing it. I love making records and I love making music with people I love, you know? So Nick gets at me. We talk a little bit. And he's like, oh, Scooter will get at you about it. And Scooter gets at me. And then we're fucking on tour in 2019 for the for like playing places like the Viper Room, the Machine Shop, and yeah. I mean it's still mind blowing. And we got to do it a second time, and it's I I don't even know what to say about about it sometimes, you know. So uh, what what made him uh, ask you to come back? Well, I think that we just had, and maybe you guys could correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think the first tour we just all got along really, really well. Mm -hmm. Like there's just an obvious camaraderie between the two bands, between Cold and University Drive. We just had a blast hanging out and, you know, super similar interests and, and especially in music and stuff. But uh, it was, I, I don't know. I, I think that we just kind of, we just kind of make it work together, you know? Can I suggest the moment where we all think it, we hit it off? Yes. Which was in Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, please, so, please. We were at this place in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, this is a great and story. There was the, uh, they were giving us wings. Like, that was what they the venue. They claimed to be the original inventor of the Buffalo, Buffalo wings. So they were just oh, smoked. Okay. Like, they just had so many trays of wings on the second floor. Yeah. And, Which and we now realize is excellent catering on behalf of a venue. Excellent that catering. That is not normal. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. So they yeah. loaded us up with wings. At the time, we didn't And I think... Was it Steve yeah. was on the bottom uh -huh. and uh -huh. he was just screaming up from the second window. Mind you, all of cold of is played. yeah, all of cold is just outside smoking. We barely this was like the first weekend. <laughs> Steve goes, toss me down a couple of those wings, and we just kept throwing. Parmesan. We kept throwing Parmesan. it. You hear the it smack was of the wing. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, it made such an audible sound. <laughs> Hands covered in fucking <laughs> sauce. Yeah, and we're just dying laughing, throwing wings up, and then you were not even eating single meat. bite wing. You weren't Whoa. even eating meat, Whoa. and you were down there. You're like, "I'll help Steve," I was catching them, and you were fun. just catching them and giving it to Steve. And they're just like, "What the fuck are these guys doing?" <laughs> you never say next to strong. Wow, I hope these guys don't. You were like, "Wow, this is really fucking risky for That's going like weird. this, looking at Steve or Ryan, me and Steve." Looking over at Nick and, and Scooter and them and Johnny, they're yeah. looking at us. I was looking at us, not really just minding our business, I guess. And it's like, okay, I think this is. Okay. You're like, I think everybody's all right. So Scooter didn't even know my first name at that point. Yeah, so I'm like, yo, 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 throw the buffalo. And we're just whipping them out the window. That was the moment. The whole thing changed, though. That was the moment that everybody became friends because they were like, these guys are fucking Our stupid. These guys suck. These guys are stupid, but they're fucking funny. So that's where it kind of all started. <laughs> Well, you guys uh, moved up to kind of direct support on, on yeah. this, this tour, which is cool, too. Yeah, yeah. In so 2019, nuts. we were like the opening, opening band. Right. Other than like if a venue had locals. Yeah. Like that, which was cool. Yeah, but this is like, I don't know, it's, it, it is funny to see the um, the way the slot differs. Because mm -hmm. I actually think on the, if correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I feel like when you're doing the very opening slot, people are a little more receptive to different things because the show has just started and yeah. they're willing to kind of hear. I kind of agree with that, yeah. yeah. But the second slot, I mean, you definitely have people's attention better because mm -hmm. they're getting ready, like, you know, direct support, they're getting ready to see sure. who they came here to see. You know, in some places we were surprised. I remember in Kentucky, somebody saying, like a couple of people were saying an execution. So it was weird that. That was bizarre. Anybody knew that was any bizarre. of our stuff. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. But yeah. I don't know. You notice that people move up forward. Yeah. We're a little more receptive. There were a couple of shows where we got like, you know, when we were running the East Coast stuff in the beginning, there were some people that came out with University Drive shirts already. And that's like 
fucking mind blowing to me. They yeah. made their own. Right. There were they, yeah, there's there were a couple people that made their own university drive shirts. Yeah, with and, execution lyrics. On yeah, them. like yeah. insanity. But then there were some like I was like, okay, well, that was all fun. Now we're in Florida. And in Florida, there were like two people walking around with like University Drive gear on. Not that we just sold to them, like that they either made or had purchased that I sent or something. Hmm. Like it was just really crazy to see that sort of stuff happening. Yeah. It's it's hard for for I, I think you guys maybe will agree with me. It's really hard mm -hmm. for to put it in your head that that's even a a possibility I think that in Florida, which right. would have been what, like a week, like into like yeah, the week, maybe yeah. March and third week of the tour. That was almost like the first moment that we all looked at each other and we were like, "Holy shit, we're like on a tour right now." Yeah, we were just like, it wasn't just like, "Oh, we're playing." That same show. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody drew us. That was nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this oh, wow. this girl we we got done playing. Uh, what was the name of the place? The Social in Florida, and I literally walked off the stage covered in sweat. I'm disgusting. <laughs> And this girl just walks up and goes, this is for you. And I go, oh, thanks. And I look at it and like beautifully drawn picture of portraits. all uh, portraits of all our faces. I still have the picture. Like amazing. People are just fucking amazing. Yeah. You know? Mind blowing. I got a pretty dope picture that was done for us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shows. dude. Yeah. So nuts. Yeah. But it's just nuts that anybody cares enough because you, you always, I guess when you go out and it's it didn't hit feel, me until man. we started doing this, um, that you know when i will drive and see a band that i i know that doesn't have that many monthly listeners that i love and i'm a big fan of <laughs> yeah and then when you're like you're amazing and they look at you like you're crazy i finally kind of get that feeling because anytime anybody came up to us and was like dude we've been listening to you guys for months i'm like why yeah <laughs> you, you have it's, nothing better to do yeah, than your yeah. spotify for what dude, why were you doing that yeah <laughs> but then you really find out like i don't know that's it's just part of the the grind mm. somebody ends up thinking they, some people end up loving you. Yeah, at first gotta it's be like, accepted. It's so it. it's so insane. At first, in those moments, I feel like those people would walk away. And we'd all look at each other like, oh, I'd like I was they, waiting for a camera. They have no idea that we're like, a, not a, a like that we're just a small band. Yeah, and it's like at, that's like what the initial feeling was, and then after that, like continues over, it just kind of turns into like uh, an appreciation for like, mm -hmm. wow, like it's like once you get over that hump of like being like. Uh, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. You kind of have to not think about that because like there's these people here that are appreciating our band. And like when you're worried, thinking like, oh, they, they don't think we're a big deal or this or that. You're not you're not spending your time being like, thank you. For yeah. Time present. Time. So it's like yeah. it, I feel like that's something that every artist face is like kind of moving from the, the moment of like the impact of a quote unquote compliment versus like being able to move past that to actually appreciating people listening to our band, coming to our merch table to like, even just go out of the way to tell us that they like the song or, or snag a picture or sign a set list or anything like that. So it's just, I don't know, it just was something that we were really grateful to be able to experience whether we could like believe it or not. We were just like, well, we just have to be, we just have to appreciate this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I you know, I think the, the one aspect of it too, um, uh, Somebody caught a pic mm -hmm. that we gave out and they had me sign it. And for 10 minutes, I was looking for like Ashton Kutcher <laughs> to like just come out and be like, ah, you stupid son of a bitch. You thought somebody liked you. <laughs> and, but like, and again, it was just, it was just happen and happen and happen. And I don't know. It, it is crazy. Um, actually, yeah. there's this one story. It has, it has something to do with the tour, but I just remembered it. I don't know if you guys would. Uh, it kind of has something to do with the fact that people enjoyed us. There's one family that really enjoyed us in Dallas, and they were right. The family was right in front of me. Oh, this is great. Yeah. There, was little, <laughs> this, there was this little six year old kid. And he was up front, and the whole time he's going like this to me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were on the last song, and I finally wanted to do it back to him. But I was playing bass, and whatever the song was meant I can't use this hand because I never had an open note. Mm. So I only had this hand, and I was picking with it. So I had to wait to like lift my hand up, but I didn't drop the pick. <laughs> so I went to go do this, but this finger didn't come up. So I <laughs> out the six-year-old, and there's a video of it, and I pop him real quick, and I go, <gasps> and you can see that this panicked overlook. <laughs> oh, so so we go, we go, bop, finish the song. I threw the bass down, and there's a picture of me running over to give this kid ever. I almost gave him my wallet. I was like, here's my pick. I'm like, Steve, Steve. So he's giving him sticks. I, I felt so fucking bad. Get this kid on stage. Oh, my God. And like the second I popped him, too, I go, huh? 
And I though I I've had like video. I've seen the footage. I have one chorus left to get through, so I have another minute to stare this kid in the face. And it's not even the kid. I don't think the kid knew he was six. I don't think he had an idea what that was. It was his parents? Because I'm like <laughs> they know I just popped him with a middle finger. Real quick. I, the, your saving grace was the fact that though your hand language might have been doing this, your face was like I was smiling. Yeah, like, I, was I was like, like rock on, little dude. And and then, like really confused like they were like is he where did he come is that yeah, a normal man. thing for like is that what the kids are doing these days like, oh yeah like, dude i popped him oh, good and i didn't yeah, mean to yeah, oh, yeah i really so i really stupid. felt so bad but then he got they got they bought merch they got a picture of me right. even in the picture i'm probably still trying to give him my wallet because you just take this i know you don't know what this is but that, run the that, debit dude that's what i was going to digress about for a second on what we were just talking about about like people seeing our band and being crazy that they like us and stuff like one like a huge advantage for us being on tour with cold is that their fan base is like amazing like the cold army is like it's not just like fans that kind of see a band there's like a, a legitimate family type of vibe going on with like anyone that steps foot into a cold show and i mean i haven't ever i haven't ever told with any other bands so it's like i don't know if that's something that is normal for bands but but uh just the fact that cold has like supported us for years has always repped us ever since 2019 like that helped us so much with coming out on this tour and being able to be like received in any type of fashion that wasn't that even though there were a lot of like first impressions for everyone seeing us on this tour like just uh that kind of uh backing from cold for a few years mixed with the fact that their fan base is like very receptive to new bands supportive of like the other opening bands on the tours supportive of other opening bands on last tours like the tour that you guys did in the fall time last year like yeah. i've just i've i've seen time and time again on cold tours the cold fan base like really being willing to go out of their way to attempt to like lift up and support the band every single band yeah band. so that's something that i don't know if we if we were just on like a random different tour i don't i don't know if we would have been able to have such a like awesome experience in that way yeah. just if it was only our first impression with with the audience now, did you guys have kind of a strategy going in in terms of how to craft a set list or uh, what you think was going to hit with, you know, because you, you assume going out on this tour that, a, you know, a good portion of the people are there for cold. They might not be familiar with you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you rope them in and whatever right. is that? Was, was that a thought when yeah. you were putting together? Yeah, big show? time. When, well, again, just to kind of go back to the 2019 tour for a second, when, when we did that, we had just put out clear. So in my head, I was like, well, fuck it. We're going to just do, we're going to basically do the first couple songs of clear and kind of like, kind of challenge the audience in a way like, like here's this ride we're taking you on. And if you come on, if you're, if you come on the ride with us, then we know you're, you're in. But if you don't, if you don't participate, you're not going to, you're not, if you don't give it a second, you know what I mean? Sure. But for this tour, we made it a like made a big point that we were going to come out kind of fucking swinging. Mm -hmm. So for this set, you know, it was just kind of all big, power, powerful songs, big, powerful songs right out of the gate. Um, we had some some mishaps in the beginning where we were trying certain songs that we thought would go over better than they did. But um, as far as just how to craft a tour for for the, for that audience in specific, we just wanted to we just wanted to fucking kick their ass essentially, mm -hmm. you know. So that's what we did. We just put together the the baddest songs we could, you know. Now, how did this tour differ from the first one? Did you feel more prepared, or did you learn some things maybe last time that you kind of applied there? I mean. I I feel I, I I felt more more prepared in the beginning. I did. Yeah. I uh, I feel like <laughs> well like we so like I was prepared for what we had already done, which is the first run wasn't nearly as long. Yeah. So I was prepared for that again. Mm -hmm. But it's a different animal when you like for instance like the first one run we went out we go out for two weeks touch home base like we come home do our thing mm -hmm. go out for three weeks touch home because mm -hmm. we we were just doing these quick runs and we'd only be home for a couple days yeah but either way it gave you that second to I hate to say it shit in your own toilet take a shower you know what I mean <laughs> yeah relax minute. but then when you're just gone like once mm -hmm. we were past New Jersey we had that hard line it was just that's it you're done here mm -hmm. comes uh here comes a month mm -hmm. so you know you you're fighting through everybody getting sick mm -hmm. which everybody fucking got yeah. sick super um, sick. <laughs> 
you're just everybody's getting sick just everybody's daily emotions you, you're sad you miss something like my my grandfather died i flew home from texas oh, uh took a flight we got to fill in and then i literally flew back into san antonio got to fill in. more like more like ryan williams was like all right ryan you go home i got this oh dude yeah. it's so funny too i was just on the phone with him in a hotel room by myself going i think it's an acorn <laughs> and he's like i got it i got it and he did he did, he did, he did amazing uh, but just even the adversity of just having to overcome family issues that you had to go home for. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was upset that everything happened, but I was also upset too. Cause it's like, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to leave. Right. You know what I mean? Cause you're, you, yeah. you've, you've made this bed with, with all your best friends that we're going to get through all this. And it's like, well, we need to get through all this. Right. So you're just trying your best to do it. Mm. So, yeah, but I mean, especially the reward at the end of getting all the way through, no matter what happened is like, Mm-hmm. I remember that last show we started mm-hmm. only in the way and I looked at you and I go, we just did it. Yeah. Cause yeah. the last song we were playing yeah. Tony's building it up. And I just went, congratulations. Cause mm-hmm. we just did the whole tour. <laughs> and then we, I think I burned like a thousand so calories that night. Cause I just was so excited and running around. So I was like, we did it. You have no idea. Well, I mean, it, because there were moments where we weren't sure if we were going to be able to do it, you know, like we got halfway out there and it was like, fuck, I don't know. Can we, can we make this? It's because we were, we were driving around in my Nissan Pathfinder, my car <laughs> across the fucking country <laughs> with a trailer, you know, yeah, so, 11 miles. It was down. definitely like over the oh. towing weight limit of the, like, of the trailer. Like, yeah. Like, way, like if, way. If your car, if the butt of your car looked like this, the front of our, like the, it was it, it was, was just, ridiculous and just sailing around and we get out to california with yeah. this thing we get all the way out there and gas hits hard mm-hmm. right like i think out in, what in the desert it was 689 yeah in the middle going from las vegas mm-hmm. back over like and, it was literally we, like you have to fill your gas tank every hour and a half because you're like slinging through gas with a heavy heavy load and mm-hmm. four dudes in a car with all of our equipment and all of our stuff it's like that and you know miles and miles and miles and miles and miles to go like everywhere and a lot of sleepless like uh, nice. it's, it's it's intimidating and that's like that's something that we didn't really know how to fathom because that's really what the difference between our tour in 2019 was and our yeah. tour now it's like in 2019 we came and went like we we didn't do play the entire tour we played probably more like a third or a half collectively of like 20 all dates. 22 dates 22 or 23 dates yeah which i think there were more dates on that yeah all big time one, like big overall. time but but anyway so so we came and went and like ryan was saying we had opportunities to like be out for a few days head back home be out for a, a you know four or five days head back home be out for one day head back home one or two days head back home and i think that after that we were like oh cool we we're a touring band. We know how to, we can tour. It's just, it's just doing that like, but every day. But then when we got out into the situation, it was like, we leave home in the beginning. And we, ha- we, since the, since the routing was like around Pennsylvania for the first couple of days, there was a quick moment that we were back home for a day. But then after that, it was just like, you're gone and we're not coming back until this is all over. <laughs> so it's like, there's no opportunity to, to like, uh, you know, restack the deck and be like, okay, so what are we going to do tomorrow? Cause it's just like every moment is just trying to make like today work. And so once today's over, you just, you know, pass out cause it's exhausting. And then suddenly you're at the venue again tomorrow. And it's like, you don't have that time to kind of re replan your, yeah. your move. So it's like, we, we quickly realized like, Oh wow, this is like really hard to do. Yep. And uh, it's not that we, I mean, obviously we weren't like entirely prepared, but I don't think you really could be, but it was more so just like, I I was like, oh, wow. Like I didn't under, I underestimated like how difficult this truly would be to just be here like every day to be uh, traveling, covering like eight and nine hour drives a day. Sometimes we would be lucky and it would only be like an hour and a half away. But I mean, when you're booking a tour, you're not going to have multiple dates in the same, like the the goal is to have a show and then for the next show to be somewhere else. So it's like, somewhere else was far away and if we were sleeping our car wasn't moving and so it's like we had to go dude like the one show we we slept in which was we stopped at loves at two or three in the morning yeah you slept for two hours and then i woke up at six in the morning in utah yeah we're in the middle of the utah was it what is that does anybody know is it the moab is that sound right i can't remember I don't even know. All right, so none of us know where we are. It was after, <laughs> um, it was after we had driven through Zion. So it's it's, it's gorgeous. It's it's 
beautiful and the sun's and coming so up. We basically woke up in the middle of the And I woke up people. and Ed's sitting watching the sunrise. He goes, hell of a thing, is it? And I was like, dude, this guy's gotta go to bed. <laughs> this guy's gotta go to bed. I literally had driven for, I think, I think I was at like the 13 hour mile drive. Times. Yeah, yeah, it was. There was this thing that would happen at, at the end of the night. Yeah. And had a long way to go. And it'd be after an entire, like we'd blowed out the show. It would be after midnight and mm-hmm. be like, Ed would be like, well, boys, Five hour energy. Just like, he'd be like, like cigarettes. We're driving. All right. <laughs> and we just, I'd be like, oh my god, dude. Towards the end of your drive, though, you look like yeah. that's right. Yeah. The, the end of the drive, you look like a lunatic, time. though. That's just yeah. five hour energy bottles everywhere. His pack of cigarettes going. Like, hell of a thing, isn't it? Look at the sun. The sun's coming up, and you're like, dude, dude, swap out, swap out. Yeah. Well, dude, it's you know it's funny too, especially considering like that was one side of like one version of it. But I know too. um Cause he he wasn't with us, so we had Johnny uh, from Cold, Johnny uh, Nova from Cold, taking over his spot because hmm. he was on tour with All That Remains. But oh, even okay. in that sense, because he was with Tala, but I, I even feel like in that regard, you had to have some awakening calls going out for because his tour was two and a half, two and a half months, two and a half months. Oh, he wow. left two weeks before us and came home a week after <laughs> us. Yeah, that it, you know, going into it, I was like, wow, two and a half months, that's a really long time to tour. And mm. I've never done like a real tour. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this was like my first like throwing into the fire <laughs> and like see how you like it. And I thought I was crazy. I was like, oh, you know, two and a half months, that seems like a long time, but it's probably just me. <laughs> and like after talking to so many of these bands and like so many big musicians and everything. And like you're talking to Mike Portnoy, and he's like, "I've never done a tour that long." And I'm like, "Okay, well that's that's interesting." And I'm talking to the guys from Miss May, and they're like, "Yeah, no, this is the longest tour we've ever done." And I'm like, "I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you guys are all really big musicians." I'm right. like, "Wow, okay, all right, this this is a long ass tour, and it starts yeah. to set in where it's like." You leave and you're like, I'm really about to leave my house for two and a half months and not see the Scranton area again for a really long time. And yeah, when you're out there, like I, I, th- I think when you take it in one big chunk, like you were saying, like it's just it's such a daunting task. It's like mm-hmm. you're really going to be out there for yeah. that long. There is no. Yeah. Come home in a couple weeks and right, hang out right, and then right. hit it again. It's like you are gone. Yeah, and it's just. And you better like everybody you're yeah, with. Yeah, you, you, yeah. It's, it's like, you better really like what you're doing because that's the only thing that's going to pull you through half the time. So, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of nights, too, I think we looked, not not to keep rambling, but I think there's a lot of nights, too, where, you know, the drive sucks so bad and mm-hmm. whatever problems were happening throughout the day, mm-hmm. that the show was the only thing we looked forward to doing. Oh, yeah. You know I mean, the yeah. show is what got us through the drive because... Mm-hmm. You can only listen to so much music and so many, you know what I mean? Like, you so many podcasts there. and like, you can lots only, of demos. And like, uh-huh. dude, we got uh-huh. lots of show and tell. <laughs> we got punched in the face every day and got back up. That's basically, all. Yeah. That's the way we considered this. Like, we, there was, I, I, even Tony, I think you could attest to this. Weren't people surprised when we showed up to venues? Like, oh, they're here. I can't believe that actually happened because there was one where we showed up at 6 30 because yeah. it took us. We slept in. We got two hours of sleep and yeah. we slept in. <laughs> yeah. And we got to Ohio or Iowa at 6 30. The first band's on. We loaded in. And I remember Johnny goes, You look like shit. He's <laughs> like, You look like you look bad. Mm-hmm. And then he was in the middle of congratulating. He was you. congratulating you. He's like, you're a man now. You look awful. He's like, look at that stubble. You look sad. He's like, hey, everybody. <laughs> Ryan looks like shit. And I was uh, like, yeah. <laughs> but we got on. And then I think we had a, one of our best shows that night mm-hmm. off of the fact that, you know, that was the only thing that got us to oh, Iowa was the fact that we had a show to play. Yeah. yeah. And then we killed it. And then as soon as we were done playing, we were like, oh. Uh, I ordered Perkins DoorDash. It didn't get there. I, I ordered it at 10. I didn't get it till 1 in the morning because I went and picked it up. I literally just I was losing my mind. We drove our asses there. It was the first time we had driven a car without a trailer on the entire tour. Yeah, we have Angelique today we, for that. Yeah, Angelique let us borrow her car, and I ate a turkey dinner in the front seat of her car, like almost crying. I go, and it's why I'm just fucking stop it. <laughs> and it was so fucking, it was so nice of her to let us have that car, too. Yes. But just in general, like that, mm. that's what got us through, I think. And it, that you really do have to love what you're doing. Otherwise, you will want to go home way faster And you know what? That's the reason why we're able to make it through is because we do love what we're doing. And it's like, exactly. no matter how hard or uh, challenging it was. And th- there's no there's no like real frustration that comes from that challenge because it's to be expected. The, the only frustration along the way is when it's like you realize that you did something that like made it harder to happen. And it's like, oh, if I had like 
you know, if I, had, if I had done mm -hmm. my guitar rig a little bit differently, this would have been so much easier to do every day. It's like, you know, you think of like, how could I have made this better? But that's really the only like, don't, like that's the only part about it that's like, man, if I, if I just could do this differently, like it could be easier. It's funny because it was all like super daunting, you know, when you'd look at the calendar and you'd be like, holy shit, we have <laughs> fucking three and a half weeks that we have to go. But no joke. I remember getting off the bus and thinking like, where did, where did that time go? Mm -hmm. Cause it truly felt like it passed in an instant or at the same time, I remember moments of, of feeling like, Holy shit. Like we're in the thick of it now. But I mean, like they were saying, like, I love it. You know, even it, it, it's, I love the, I love the juxtaposition of it too. I love the fact that, that I miss home. I love that I miss home because I do, I love being home, but I love being there too. And I like, I, I like the idea of balancing those worlds, you know? I think a lot of people too have this kind of impression of, uh, oh, wow, you're, you're, you're going to go on this, you know, luxurious, uh, air conditioned bus. Yeah. And yeah. they're, you know, they're going to take it, <laughs> take everywhere and you're going to get to see the sights. I mean, you're going across the country, so you're going to see all these wonderful landmarks and things like that. And it's like, you, realistically, you yeah. don't have time for any of that shit. None of that yeah. stuff is really going to happen. Yeah, the it's alleyway really behind the grueling. venue is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I mean, people want to, you know, even interviewers want to ask you, like, oh, well, what's this city like and yeah. stuff like that. It's like, did you really get to see this? Not Probably really. Not. I mean, sometimes you get opportunities to, I feel like, but other times us. it's just like you see the venue and that's it. Yeah. Or, or yeah, the inside of the bus or whatever you're We touring. went to some guitar shops. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like we didn't really get to see see much because you know the schedule is so yeah. everything's so tight you know right. so it's like there's not much time and as far as like you know eventually we migrated to the bus we were allowed to get on the bus and uh <laughs> when we when we got on the bus that even changed it because in the car and this was something you and johnny would say to us all the time you'd be like you know it's the bus is a lot more you know you can get sleep and you can don't have to worry about it but you don't see, you don't see everything as much, you know, right. at the car, you really do. You see like you, you're walk, you're driving through the mountains and you see the mountains, you know, you're driving into LA and you're like, holy shit, we're driving into LA. But in the bus, you're not seeing that stuff, but you have bus breakdowns and all that <laughs> shit, you know? So the AC is like, by, the end, by the end of the tour, bus, air conditioning is like a privilege if you can have it. Kind of, <laughs> right. Bus, yeah. So I, I'm, I don't know. Just speaking personally, I'm just, I'm grateful for travel at all. Mm -hmm. You know, like just the fact that we were able to get from mm -hmm. gig A to gig B to the end of it. Not to mention yeah. that getting on the bus made it possible basically for us to finish the yeah. tour. It's like, it's like what we were talking about. This is kind of what I was alluding to before when I was like, band, like every band always needs help at some point in time. And it's like, it always is various different ways. And like before in our world, it was like, how could a single person help a band? But out in like, in touring world, it's like, how can bands help each other? And I mean, everyone that's ever done any type of touring would agree that like every band that's a part of the package makes it possible for everyone else as we're going through our things. Ryan has to fly home. Uh, you know, Ryan Williams jumps in a place for us because he's called guitar tech and he's like, I got this guys, you know, Steve has to fly home. And Tony's like, guys, I got you. You know, cold is like, they, like they had a merch girl that had to go home halfway through the tour. And it's like, you know, they needed help too from us. So it's like, we needed help from them. And basically all these things just kind of lined up that made it possible for all of us to finish the tour. Yeah. Because it's like, well, we can help sell merch, and they were like, well, we can help like get you there, and uh, it just it just made everything possible for everyone. Yeah, and we all relied on each other in that way. I mean, when you're in a package, and this is what I was talking to you about, Mark. With it's like, you know, we got we got to be like on the road with people that we know, and like a band that is our band, and even as things, you know, as things like as people jumped in and jumped out it's like it's all people that we've known for the last couple of years and that we've yeah. become close with people that i've toured with before people that ed's toured with before and and mark was like out slinging the country like kind of as like the <laughs> single lone NEPA dude in your tour package yeah. and it's like that's really hard to do and i can't even imagine how hard that must have been because we emotionally just had 
had a hard time literally just getting through the tour and we were all here to support each other. Mm. So it's like, it's gotta be tough feeling alone in that way, even yeah. though you're fr homies with your band. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it uh, it's definitely beneficial to be doing it with people that you're familiar with that, you know, you can laugh and have these stories and come home and, you know, everybody's local and it's, it's so like different when you're with people that you're not too familiar with and not to mention you're touring with all these other bands that you're not familiar with. Like I know mm -hmm. of their music and everything, but like to know people personally, it is very like, <clears throat> I'm 25 and I need to learn to make friends really fast. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you hit an age where you're like, I don't know if I could do that anymore. I'm like, how do I yeah. make friends? Like, what do I do? <laughs> Buy someone a beer? And I'm like, want to be friends now? Like, you know, it's just, right. it's funny. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you really just like, Everybody, like you said, has to learn to like help everyone else out. And it, it very much becomes like that give and take relationship of like, hey, we're all in this together and we're all kind of alone. But, yeah. you know, like it just it works out at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's why I felt annoying calling you. But I was just like, no, how no, are dude. you? <laughs> dude, oh, my God. No, I miss you guys so much. Yeah. It's yeah. Just because like, like it, dude, it's hard. Again, it's, it's so yeah. it is so hard even when you have like like we hang out. Outside anyway, of the band, you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. hang out all the time, yeah. so it's like it's not something where yeah, we're going to get pizza after this. We're, yeah, we yeah. are going to get yeah, pizza. You bitch more than one. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> <Fingers> <laughs> open. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be yeah. eating like three <laughs> pizza. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> 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 Delivery. <laughs> bitch, cut, the, cut the feet. We gotta get the sabatinis. Come on. Come oh, sabatinis so good. Dude, I've been missing it. No, but I don't know. I feel like you definitely need that that support, and also the other thing that. I was gonna say. I feel like your attitude towards everything is everything is well, yes, um, for a multitude of reasons. Like I watched a lot of, um, you know, on on our run. I know it wasn't as prevalent on your run, um, but on our run there was a lot of local acts, mm -hmm. and the local acts would be awesome. Some of them came in and just treated everybody like garbage, and nobody listened to them. <laughs> so, remember the one band that came in? Um, I, I'm not gonna go into certain yeah, specifics yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. But the one band came in, I think we were in one of the Dakotas. That's mm -hmm. how I'll leave it. He was telling people where to move merch. He goes, hey, hey, move the table. I was like, bro, 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 what is happening? <laughs> My name's Ryan. Nice to meet you. What's happening? Yeah. Like, I, like, I, the package. I feel like everybody's, <laughs> I feel like your attitude towards it, like, in, in general, like, there's, mm. you, you always go around with a grain of salt. You, you treat yourself with respect, but you treat others with respect as well. And it's getting sure. back to you. It's and just, if you walk in so demanding and, yep. and, yeah. and, you know, if you're like, well, I'm not moving this, I'm not doing this. It's like, dude, you're it's, so much better off. It's just so easy to be kind. It's so easy. It to be kind. It's so fucking easy. And so I watch all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it, you have to go out of your way to be a prick. Dude, That's what it, I mean. really, it is so much harder. I don't know. To Honestly, like I had plenty of moments on tour where I was like almost a dick to it, whether it's like, I, I don't, I'm just like, it's a sad, it's just like things are frustrating. You have a sound guy trying to get your band up and running like different house guy every night. And it's like, I actually did find it sometimes challenging to be nice, but realistically, that makes it easy for you because if it's easy to be a dick to someone then it really makes the rest of your night like really difficult because that's the dude that's going to be mixing your band while you're on stage that's the dude that after you get done with your sound check yeah if you need anything you're going to have to go and talk to him and it's like if you slip up and are kind of a jerk to someone like that who is you know basically like helping your band in that moment then they're just kind of like all right, bro. <laughs> Guess no one's gonna hear your guitar tonight. Yeah, yeah you're shooting like, yourself in the foot. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. You get you get humbled really fast if you try to go out and be like, "Well, I'm not I'm not striking my pedal board. It's gonna stay right here." Well, I, I, I personally, I personally had that Shut moment, up. like right in the beginning of the tour. Where I was like, "Well, stage is big enough. I don't need to move this." And it's like I was like, "Oh fuck, I'll just move the fucking pedal board." And then, <laughs> and then after I moved it, like it sounds so dumb, but like three days later, I was like, you know. I'm glad I just moved the fucking album. <laughs> because I don't know you at, at that point, once you get into that realm, like your personal uh, mentality slash like uh, morale just kind of goes like this. And then it's like, you find a way to be annoyed about every little thing that's not right. And you know, well, this stage sucks and well, these monitors suck in this venue and that and that. And then before the end of it, you're just spending the time being like negative about it. And you're having this, opportunity of a literal lifetime that every single one of us have all spent our whole lives and still spend every day of our lives 
wanting and hoping that we could do again because you know i mean you, every time that we come home from anything it's like that was so amazing i really hope that we like get to do something like yeah. that again because i mean realistically like every tour could be your last tour ever and uh so that that was a personal thing that like i had to uh that uh, that i i didn't think would be something that i would have to realize but i actually did have to because i've never had troubles with being like irritable to sound guys and stuff like that that's never like i've i've been a sound guy like <laughs> literally since as long as i've been playing in bands but it's just like i said when you're not getting sleep and you're not eating right and and you're not you haven't showered in a couple days and like just you're irritable and that is when like you have to be like be nice to everybody it's the hardest nice. it's one of the hardest it parts pays off yeah every time because yep. it makes your night so much easier yep. and taking the easy way out makes your night it's, so much harder it's so funny though because i really feel like sometimes we really got a hand in a hot bag of shit <laughs> so like lady luck yeah. just opened a hot hot microwave full of shit it's like eat up boys and yeah. every day i feel like for the most part all of us were like oh, i love shit yeah. so i ate it and yeah. but like there'd be other people like you know i mean like, just in general like you'd talk to and you'd be like Man, it's it, it's not that bad. No, dude, <laughs> like, it was the, no. so many. For, I mean, positions. I mean, literally, like I just look at it this way through the whole thing. Like, despite whether you know you have any any sort of issue, whether one night the sound isn't good. I mean, the first or the second That's or me. third night, I blew my voice out. <laughs> literally blew my voice out, and I couldn't. I had a really hard time singing for the first week. I was fucked. You know, like wow, it was terrible. It was yeah. really really awful. But um whether you have issues with you know sound guy at place a or place b or you have issues with the venue or anything like that at the end of the day you're we're on this we, we're we're lucky enough to be included on this tour where we get to play mm -hmm. for people who who are there to see a, see a great show and we're there to give them you know try to at least bring them our way a little bit and i mean all that other stuff like sure we everybody gets grumpy or whatever yeah. but you know at the end of the day it's like all that matters we're playing great music you know yeah right? so. again i th just think your attitude's everything yeah oh, it really is like you That's gotta walk thing. in with a smile and you know hopefully you can receive one back and it's usually funny because most people especially if you love what you're doing i noticed um you know you walk in you're just happy to be there and it's really funny you could almost point out who's not happy to be there mm -hmm. and it's like dude you could be at work right now. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? You're playing a guitar. Like, let's have fun. Cheers. Let's have a good you time. Know how many times I was like, dude, I could literally be doing electrician things right now, but instead I'm like, I'm on I'm, tour. Yeah. Like, I'm living my dream. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it, it's just, it's one of those things where, like, I don't know. When I was out on tour, like, any little thing that you, like, start to sweat, you're like, you have to remind yourself i worked so hard for so many years to get to this point like why am i complaining about small stupid right. stuff right now like right. i wanted this you know right. what i mean and when you really think about it that way you're like you take that step back and you're like this situation's not bad at all right like i could not be doing anything right, right. now. you right. know i could just be going to work in the morning and when you do that it, like you said like it humbles you like there's a lot of things that humble you really fast exactly so yeah, yeah there, there's no one's attitude on the tour that inspired me more than tony's honestly like tony was at every turn pro it was like somebody who kind of exemplified to us like being willing to be like guys we're out here doing this we're here like literally this is what we've worn for our whole lives so it's like I don't know any moment of, of where I was like oh, I don't know like I don't know I don't know if I could do this I would just think to myself like I would literally look at Tony and see him in the morning with, right with us loading stuff in see him setting his drum set up and then you know us eventually coming to him and asking him to drum with us for the second half of the tour so that we could finish it and him being like hell yeah and yep. then you know learning our set and just after already knowing that every night you're gonna play an hour and a half with cold to then jump up before that with us and it's like so any moment that i was like oh, i'm too tired i can't get this done i was like exactly oh, yeah i don't get to say that <laughs> yeah you're like, i don't hey. get to say that yeah and then that was it tony tony was a benchmark for yeah. us that and moment. not only that too tony was the guy too that like i mean the show of the whiskey almost didn't happen if everybody remembers correctly because there was an issue for a bus. million reasons yeah, yeah and like there was so many things but i remember it was so funny i was kind of like having a moment and i saw tony and he was he, he walked in uh just like we, we loaded cold and we try to help out real quick to get the show rolling because something happened with the bus they had to get a trailer dropped off with all their stuff mm. tony you were sitting at your drum kit eating food that you had already delivered and you were sound checking your tacos drums, yeah. going 
playing the whiskey tonight, baby. <laughs> he goes, be ready. And I was like, I shouldn't ever give a shit about anything going on. That was a rough day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was right. We started off the day thinking everything was gravy because we are already had issues with the bus prior to that we thought we had fixed. We left 11 in the morning. I remember my bus driver kind of saying, hey, everything's good. We got the bus fixed. Every Smooth sailing into L.A., baby. Mm. And I'm like, oh, shit. Don't ever say that. Kind of <laughs> but anyways, you know, I'm looking back at the photos last night and we're driving. You could see me taking pictures out the window and it's like showing like the signs for L.A. And I'm like, and the next photo is us on the side of the road broken down <laughs> and not on the side of the road, like on the like road. It's the like road. a seven lane highway and cars aren't shifting over. They're coming right against you and mm. the buses. Crazy. And it's scary because, you know, we had a tragedy that way a few years ago amongst right. our own. Yeah. So that was scary to deal with that. But yeah, it was all the way up until almost like 4.30 in the afternoon. We're still on the side of the road. Hour and a half out of LA. Who runs at one o'clock every day? Yeah, oh, wow. out of LA. So the trailer, we have the trailer with everything. And the assets of the bed. Yeah, and, and all, yeah, these guys, all these guys are already in LA. They went in a couple of days earlier. Scooter and I stayed back to be with his, he wanted to see his daughter in Temecula. So I stayed with him and uh, so it was only him and I and Taven. And yeah, I'm looking at him like, bro, this shit ain't happening. And it was devastating because that was one of my, this is why I'm doing this tour. Not right. why I'm doing the tour. But I'm yeah, doing one it regardless. Of the ones. But that was between that and the machine shop. Those are my two, mm. man, you know. Like the, yeah, the man, things the that whiskey, you're looking for. Yeah, the whiskey, the man, you know. I feel um, like everyone, Motley Crue, yeah. the doors, everybody. <laughs> it's like, you know, you grow up thinking, I need to play there. Yeah. So that was being taken away out of nowhere. Wow. And I'm sitting there thinking I'm devastated. I'm like, oh God. And then somehow two records roll up. One record takes the physical bus to Prevost. The other record takes the trailer and drives <laughs> it to LA. Now Scooter and I can't go because of, you know, COVID protocols. They won't let us in the, the record. Mm. So we have to Uber to LA. <laughs> oh. yeah. You guys showed up. It was hysterical. Ching, ching, Dude, ching, ching, now, yeah, that driver. Well, I mean, that if, that anybody, oh, oh, geez, if, if anybody yeah. knows anything about Scooter, he's he's not doing an Uber to LA. You know, I mean, he's <laughs> done this long enough. That's he's true. earned the right to roll into LA in his tour bus. Yeah, not in an Uber. Very uncomfortable. It was a situation, but we knew what we had to do. You yeah. know, he had friends, family. You know, Matt Pinfield was coming in the town mm. a few other things was happening plus it's the whiskey man yeah you know and uh that's yeah you... so we rolled up literally like goddamn like six fucking 30 or something it was like 20 minutes before door it was Jesus. late it was in like we roll in everything not to mention this was everything. i think only the second this was the second show no this was the second show, playing. Second second show playing, with us. playing with you guys so that was also crazy because i said man not only do I get to play the whiskey, I get to play it twice in one night. I was like, wow. <laughs> See, that's what Tony's thinking. You know? Whereas meanwhile, yeah. Yeah. we are worrying that Tony's gone, oh, fuck, I'm all late for my show. Yeah, I'm no, playing no, with these guys. He's like, second night. It's early in the exactly. Tony like, rolls in and he goes, I'm playing the whiskey. And I get to do it twice. And that's, <laughs> and that's why I'm like, this dude is absolutely yeah. insane. And yeah. I fucking love that's it. That's why we do sound checking the drums. I'm like, oh, God, I don't even want to talk to Tony. He's probably going to be miserable because of everything. And you're sitting there eating going, I whiskey well, twice tonight, yeah. boys. And we're like, yeah. what? Yeah. Well, I, I was really hungry because, again, imagine we leave at 11 in the morning and then I'm on the side of the road. Now, even though, you know, we have some food on the bus, I'm very particular about what I eat, when I eat it, meticulous for the fact that I'm doing shows, how I'm going to digest the food, how I'm going to feel on stage. Ryan will attest to that. He'll tell a story later <laughs> about eating before he plays. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's just things that I have. No, I have a way of doing things. And yeah. And that was disrupted. Mm. So Tony has I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat lunch. I'm at the whiskey at seven o'clock at night. I didn't eat what well, we were playing at like eight thirty. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, oh shit, what do I do? I'm faded. Every last bit of energy's out of me. 
luckily enough, there's a taco place right next door. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I was like, how the fuck did you have time to do that? You just rolled in. Next thing you know, I'm sitting there with tacos like, on the drums. <laughs> I actually had the false share of the photos. Like, have the tacos, everything's all out on the drums. And I'm just like, yeah, this is great, boys. And sound checking, banging on drums with tacos everywhere. And <laughs> of, uh, we made it happen, and it was magical. Yeah, it was, it was one of the most incredible moments, a pivotal moment for my career. And... You know, to think that it was going to happen with Cold was amazing. But to know that it happened with these guys first was, you know, extra special because, you know, we're from the same hometown. Plus, these are my dudes. And, you know, yeah, it was it was a beautiful moment. And I got to do it with Johnny Nola, who's been my brother since we were children. And mm. we started our career together. And here we are again together. You know, with cold and also university drive, yeah. so it's it's great. Well, you know, I've I've talked to, to uh, Nick Coyle a bunch of times about yeah. how he got into to cold and everything, but I haven't heard the story of how you got in. Yeah, well, I think we we kind of share the same the same story where when Lifer first kind of hit the scene because him and I play in Lifer together uh, when we first got signed with Universal, one of our first tours was supporting Cold. Hmm. On, I believe, well, I believe it was the 13 Ways to Bleed tour. I could be wrong. It might have even have been prior to. Um, either way, you know, that's how we met up with those guys, the original cold, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah, I mean, even then I bought it and I'm like, these guys are fucking great. You know what I mean? The look, the sound, the everything. I was like, this is something else that like these guys touch base. Uh, earlier, the fan base, the the cold army, everything it was like a cult. It was like, holy fuck, yeah, <laughs> it was dope. Yeah. And like, I was like overwhelmed by it. So you know, that was my connection then. Um, obviously, as the years go on, you know, I really connected with uh, with Glenn, who was uh, their tech at the time, who I'm still friends with. But that was kind of how I stayed connected okay. through Glenn. And then when they would play places like crocodile rocks or something close by I'd go and you know they'd give me passes for the day stay connected that way sure then i guess fast forward because nick had always kind of connected with so nick's just been in the industry you know he's the man you know it just is what it is he's <laughs> synonymous with what he does and he sought after so when scooter needed somebody you know nick just so happened to be there and yeah that was nick's connection and then of course that's how it pulled me in you know, in 19, I got offered the job, you know, um, I reluctantly turned it down because I was working at a good job at the time, you know, supporting my family. And, um, yeah, the pandemic shut that down, though. So when uh, okay. I, because I was doing public transit, when I lost my job through the pandemic, that's when, you know, the tour happened for the fall tour. That's when you needed a job. And that's when I needed a job. And they <laughs> called me again. And I was I was blown away because who comes back to a guy twice when he already turned you down the first time? Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially when you're in a valley with the, <laughs> the, the caliber of musicians. Right. The Zach Kelsch's, the Randy Elmies, the Chad Saligas, the oh my God, you know, I mean, you can go on and on the Steve Martins. The just, you know? I mean, the, who am I? You know what I mean? So, yeah, Nick nodded me, you know, and gave me the opportunity, and I could never thank him enough. He changed my career in that aspect, you know, bringing me into that world. And then now these guys are re-changing my career in a whole other way. So it's kind of like a beautiful movement, mm -hmm. you know, full circle. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just it, you know. Uh, I met up with Cole 20 years ago, uh, toured with them, and then just kind of stayed connected. And it all comes back there. around. Yeah. Right place, so. right time. And then, and then just that. Nick being in the band, they needed a drummer. Um, you know, here I am. So. And to, and to Tony's point, yeah. I ate two lobster rolls before I played the show, and I threw up. <laughs> well, tell him why you threw up. Tell him, tell him why you threw up. No, 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 because he, he made it a point that he wanted to tell him. <laughs> he said that, did he not? Oh, yeah. I did, I did, I did. I did, I did. We, we got to talk. No, because we, no, we were talking about it before everything was going on. I was like, this would be funny. Yeah. But just in general, so I got <laughs> sick. I got I got sick and it was just like a like a bad flu basically like we everybody got it it's everybody awful. got sick. you and I were sick at the same time Me and we you were got recovering cooked. together yeah we got cooked I cam those yeah we, we were like we had alarms set off we were just trying three, to every three hours <laughs> alarms going off Ryan 
but, <laughs> but I was well, Ryan, this. Do you remember when I looked at you and said, do you need the second lobster roll? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, so there's, I got mine. like, long and short in Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio, was Lobster Week. Um, which is hysterical because I guess there's no body of water close by that the lobster would reside in. Uh, right. It's so not that far away. Yeah, the good old yeah, lobsters. Yeah, <laughs> so Ange and I go. Ange goes, I'm going to eat light. So he, which you didn't. Oh, you know, you did. You only had one of them. I got a double meat lobster roll and they gave you two of them. And I smoke, Rich, I <laughs> promise you, there was not a soul in that place that didn't see me eat that. I was like, oh. I just, I demolished them. Fuck with that shit. So I, I kill it. And I do do seafood. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized that I, uh, my medicine's wearing off just for like the whole flu cold, whatever the hell was going on. So I took this out to sell some plus thing and I forgot that they really make my stomach sick. It makes me feel better, but it makes me feel like I have to throw up. (laughs) So I walked up to the green room and I mean, we're on. Like, yeah. we are, like, they are putting set lists on the ground. The lights are dimming. Can like, I interject in your story? Ed, Ed, Ed Kuzo, please. So I was, <laughs> I was also sick. Beginning of the beginning. You're not the only person who got sick from that food, mind you. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, I heard. I heard. I, heard. Sick, I, yeah. I think I'm the only one who felt good. I yeah. You are like, like, I ate that shit. It was great. because I did not eat both of the physical buns. Uh, they okay. saturated them with all kinds of butters and stuff. Yep. Yeah. I took all my lobster meat off one, queasy off, thinking about put it on the other, bun. and then I only ate a quarter of that other bun because I only needed so much carbs. Yeah, that course I knew, knew, I did. When I, we were I, playing, I, put, ooh, I put it under. Don't worry, Ooh. Mr. Boots. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a food calculator that is attached to a clock, and every single day when you're running and running and running to get yourself loaded in loading out and you don't have time to eat it's like it's a ticking time bomb because it's like by <laughs> once you get into set time then it's like you can't eat anymore and that's what leaves us in the situation well, where it's like we're gonna eat the lobster there right was an ed kuzo like, interjection ed kuzo well like, what's it called well all i remember is this i i didn't know about any of that shit <laughs> i didn't know about any of that shit this is all i knew i told you i blew my voice out in the beginning of the tour and i got it back for two or three weeks then we're at scully's diner this is where this shit went down correct yes. right and yeah, and uh-huh. i was also sick which i was singing through it was really fucking hard so i was making sure to go somewhere every day and do vocal warm-ups <laughs> so there's a green room up behind the stage right so i go up the stage and i'm just like la da da la 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 <laughs> doing my dumb shit and i just hear <laughs> like just dying in the other room and i go ryan you're like yeah but so what happened was i was pacing around the bathroom because i didn't have to throw up yet but i knew i had to so i was pacing and for some reason i well i don't think it's a surprise that i would talk to myself because i talked yep, so fucking you were much. talking <laughs> but I was fucking hysterical you gotta be kidding me you gotta be kidding me right before i threw up my last okay and then just like i literally said the word okay and started throwing up and i hear ed go right <laughs> You throw it up in there? I go, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just kept throwing up, and then we walked out. Actually, funny played. enough, that's not even the first show I threw up, because I threw up in Minnesota, too. I remember I that. I pushed poor Sierra Swan It's because you're the, the you're the screamer of our band. Oh, dude, I'm I almost like this all the time. What I do is, this is really dumb. I don't, like, it's not like a, like, I don't know any terminology of any of it. I don't know what a fry is. I don't know. I am literally going... At the top of my lungs, just yelling. <laughs> and what happens is sometimes Tony would get some food and go, Mr. Groot, I, Mr. Groot, I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat all of it. Just eat some of it. And I, he got a bocce. And I was like, I love a bocce. And I ate it. And then we went on in 30 minutes. And I went to go yell whatever the hell it would be. And I went, huh? and I felt a piece of chicken <laughs> slap oh, my cum. No, 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 no. <laughs> And I just Don't make shut me shut down. <laughs> dude, yeah. So like I just now now I won't I won't I won't, I won't eat if like we're on at eight. I'm done eating at three. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I I stopped. Oh, I just started yeah. I just started literally eating at the end of the night. That's the only way I can Dude, do you it. know how many times on the tour people be like, 10 minutes to stage, and I'm sitting there with a can of SpaghettiOs just listen, shoveling them in? Listen. You're and, disgusting. Dude, yeah, oh yeah. No, 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 you're disgusting for eating SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Wait, That's the worst steak I've ever seen in my life. Would anybody agree? Hold on. Time out. Time out. Yeah, time, time out. Just, yeah, time just out. Time out. Time out. Yeah, dude. I learned that from the opening band on Cold's last tour. I said, dude, eating a can of cold beef. SpaghettiOs. Dude, you're disgusting. I pounded them like 10 minutes before you go on. That smell is putrid. It's terrible. I love them. It's a stink, dude. I love them. All right, well, everything's a baby bonus stink. Wrap it up. Reel it in, Rich. Fill it in now because I'm done talking to him. I can't talk about food anymore. (laughs) Dumb idiots. Yeah, now we get our pizza.
Yeah, I'll tell you what though, bouncing around a stage with a can of spaghettios in you is not a good idea. Not, not good. Not a good time. <laughs> I, I walked off that stage many a time, going, "That was a mistake." Mm. I feel really bad after Made that. Made plenty one. of those. Yeah. Note to self: Give time for digestion. Yes. Yeah. At least a half <laughs> hour. Yeah. At Listen, least a half hour. Why do you hour. think I stop eating two hours before I play? Yeah. But Smart. that's the difference, you know, to just kind of finalize this little topic. <laughs> Them traveling in a van in the first half of the tour, even to the end of the tour, they were saying the ability to just have the luxuries like I had on a tour bus are slim to none. <laughs> so I was able to say I'm going to eat at this time. I'm going to eat lunch at this time. I'm going to eat dinner at this time. Not always in that exact thing because I still had meet and greets. I still had sound checks. But for the most part, I wasn't on the fucking road driving going, mm. where the fuck are we at? Right. <laughs> if I wanted to eat, I can eat and eat something decent. These uh-huh. guys were struggling. I think it goes both ways. Rough, it's like, but when you got to the places, yeah, you still weren't like, yeah. hey, we can just go and eat. Yeah. You had to do so much. It's like, so, you're on. So you might, you move, like yeah. Ryan said, be eating 20 minutes before you play. Right. Sometimes you're yeah. forced to do that. Sometimes you eat the right shit and it works out. Sometimes you know what? You when don't. you do that, you got to chew your food. You know, how <laughs> chew the food. However, you know, yeah, yeah. note to self. Just uh, yeah. eat earlier. For everybody out there, don't eat two lobster rolls and try to. Don't eat two lobster rolls. <laughs> That's the main takeaway here. Too much yeah. butter and That's bread. That's what we came here to say today. He was disgusted anyway because he hates seafood. He was bad He's like, I don't he got bad, bad memories of it. He has childhood trauma surrounding seafood. Mm-hmm. Childhood trauma. Yeah, wait, hold on a second. Did you eat two whole lobster rolls and oh, shit on me for eating spaghetti no else? Dude, because one of them's disgusting and one of them's de- delicious. <laughs> Just because I rich. threw it up doesn't mean it was bad. Next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit here with your spaghetti old mouth. Dude. I didn't want to switch oh, spots with me. I'm sitting Ryan. next to this guy and I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> I didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> with oh, that bullshit answer. <laughs> All right, so let's let's uh, let's go down the line. Uh, the sh- shorter uh, answers because we, we got to wrap up a little bit soon. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what uh, what was your favorite venue the the uh, the whole tour? Oh shit! Uh, probably shit. I actually don't know. Oh, you know what? Amplify in Dallas, Texas. I think I it was like Amplify about to cry because it was just it was yeah. beautiful. It was like an outdoor venue. It was like an amphitheater that looked over like this lake, or like a little pond thing, and mm. it was like a packed show too. There's a balcony. It made me feel like I actually did something in my life. My mom could hang it up on a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Mark. Oh god. So um. Oh, Jesus. That's a really tough question, actually. I would say it bounces between three different venues. So there was um, Janice Live in Florida was really awesome. That was an outdoor venue as well. Um, Amplified was really good. But I think, actually, there was a venue in Green Bay. It was like brand Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> Green Bay, the town, I might get some flack for saying this, not my favorite place on earth by far. <laughs> like, just like, we rolled in. It's Wisconsin, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. I looked, mm. and, and I'm like, oh, wow, like, we're in fun. Green Bay. Like, I'm looking at the Green Bay Packers Stadium, but it looks like the Pittston Bypass. And you're like, all right, well, this is it, huh? Okay. <laughs> just real yeah. quick, give them an idea what the green room, your green room had. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this is why it was one of my favorite venues on the tour. So we walked into the green room and well, first off, we get in the venue and they're like, yeah, you know, they helped load in all our stuff. Like we didn't really have to touch much. And they were like, yeah, uh, laundry's right here. The basketball court is right down the hallway. Uh, your green room's upstairs. We walk into what looks like a luxury hotel room that you would pay $400 a wow. night for. And they were like, yeah, the cooler's stocked with beers and everything. Uh, we'll be bringing more stuff up. Uh, there was a coffee maker, just like granite countertops, luxury bathroom. When you got in the shower, like colored lights turned on when the door closed. And I'm like, how is this our green room? Don't ever get hurt of me. He said a fucking basketball court. Yeah, oh, yeah. Waffle yeah. Oh, yes, we did play basketball. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it bounced back between – those two and so uh, the Paramount in Huntington, New York. Mm-hmm. They had a really cool speakeasy in the bottom level where you walk through what looks like a bookshelf, and there's just a whole speakeasy back there. And <laughs> it's yeah, it was a really cool venue and definitely the biggest stage I've ever been on. Yeah. How about you, bud? Uh, okay, so I have a few. Uh, I'm just gonna give my most of this and most of that. So uh, <laughs> the most cool venue to play was obviously the Whiskey Go Go because. That was the one night of the tour that I was like absolutely shitting my pants before we got on stage. Like I, I was literally like, I was I was really nervous before that show, and uh, it was just like 
we got on stage and I was, I felt petrified the whole set. And I was like, Oh my God, I, I, I might've just like boofed the whiskey a go, go. And then, <laughs> and then like, uh, and, then we, and then we watched like, uh, <laughs> we watched, uh, and we saw all this video was set and it was like, awesome. We, we looked so good. And then, um, the most, uh, like the smoothest, most professionally run venues, uh, house of blues in Anaheim and absolutely the machine shop in uh, Flint, Michigan yeah. was mm-hmm. like amazingly run. And then the most fun venue to play was, I can't remember the name of the venue, but it was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it was like w- one of the only shows on the tour that was showed up. And it's like, it didn't even seem like the venue had what was necessary for their Capital Theater. Capital Theater, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. All this thing, it was like a Tuesday night. We were literally in Kentucky, which we are, just have no roots in Kentucky whatsoever. And we ended up having like the most fun playing that night on stage. And the most fun like experience being received by an audience, which is one of the smallest audiences on the tour. And it just was like, we just had, it was like one of my favorite nights of the tour. So those are my like four top venues probably. Tell Yeah, baby. Machine <laughs> shop, baby. Machine shop, Flint, Michigan, by mm-hmm. far mm-hmm. my highlight. It was my highlight last cold tour. Everybody kept talking about it. I didn't get it. I didn't understand till I got there. Then it became quite evident why it's such a high regarded place to play. Number one, the place is dope. Uh, the staff, by far the best staff. Kevin and top the staff, notch. top notch. There is hands down nobody who takes care of you better, does more for you, treats you like your fucking Post Malone. You know what I mean? They treat you just like they would treat anybody, top to, to bottom. Don't matter your caliber. The fucking sound system there is ungodly rich. As a drummer, when I kick that kick drum, it's so overwhelming that it takes a couple of minutes to go. I got to get fucking used to this. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Because it's. You've got all the power. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yes. You know, they're sound man butt cracking everybody. Like, they're just. Everybody's (laughs) dope. And I mean, like I said, they they go above and beyond and out of their way for everybody not mm. just cold even the opening minutes. but even when yeah. i was doing the uni and even black satellite they just were just like hands down and then the people you have flint santa doug dope you know everybody is who has ever played their nose to flint santa <laughs> you know? um and and just just the energy of the place you know what i mean it's just it's great you know oh um and then of course the whiskey but the whiskey was for me was just more of a just that moment that stage that place that everything you know the culmination of my whole career coming to this venue um yeah i didn't like the 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 alcohol prices there though at the whiskey (laughs) holy fuck three jack and coke double 60 bucks i said i ordered three drinks i said yeah 60 bucks i was like fuck where are the machine shop you know you know they they take care of you Mm -hmm. they got their own beer and everything that's off the chart i mean if you don't know now you know do yourself a favor machine shop flint michigan <laughs> top club and, and you got you know, the yeah, iconic yeah, picture yeah. too because i've seen so many band pictures oh, well, that's that. too, in the back yeah. hallway which yeah. is yeah. basically coming in from your loading zone through you know kevin's office and yeah. you know just right to the stage it is the spot yeah and to know that we have our photo there it's amazing so is he. That photo yeah, was that's, what, yeah, that's what i'm saying yeah. you know just to, i thought it was like cool to have my picture there last year with cold yeah but then to come and get it done with the university drive and cold again it's <laughs> like holy fuck, it's fucking insane man i think my, yeah my favorite thing was uh yeah. we played there twice in a row the yeah. first night sold out we came again yeah. and then the second night sold out but it took me until like most of the way through the second day to realize there's a bathroom in there in that hallway. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, the little you're door. The crew photos yeah, are. you're looking at like all these pictures and you're like, wow, yeah. and it's like this secret door, like you can't even really see the outline <laughs> of the door. There's just a doorknob in between like two picture frames, yeah. and you open it and there's the tiniest little toilet closet you've ever <laughs> seen. See, there's a capacity one. I yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Literally. There's yeah. a seventy-five percent chance I'm in that bathroom while you were taking your picture. I don't know if you guys know, but there's a mirror on an arm in that, and you can pull it out, and I shaved my face into that toilet. Right That's before, fantastic. Right before yeah. we got that photo. That's why I got, had a nice yeah. clean shot. Oh, you look, you look mm. smooth. You look dapper. Mm-hmm. Eddie, what about you, brother? Um, Well, I have three 
three favorite venues. Oh, so perfect. I'm just gonna gonna <laughs> and, and really I'm original. <laughs> I know, but but they were. Uh, I'm gonna second everything that Tony said about the machine shop. Everything. That's exactly my feelings about it. I also, when we played, I was looking at people, and I, it was really hard for me to to gauge what they were feeling. And I was, I, I almost felt like after we played, I was like, did I blow it? Did I fuck everything up? And then I walked out and these people couldn't be sweeter to me about our set. So outside of that and outside of how great that club was, like unbelievable, unbelievable place. Second one being the whiskey because it's the fucking whiskey, man. It's the whiskey. Got to meet Matt Pimfield. Got to fucking just got to play that beautiful stage. And I really remember that sound guy being really nice and really incredible when we played there. But my favorite show of the whole tour, honest to God, was Brick by Brick in San Diego. Because oh. it was the first show that we played with Tony. Tony learned our songs in fucking seven hours. We didn't have a sound check. We didn't have anything. We all went on stage and we we, we looked at each other and said, all right, we're going to see what the fuck happens. <laughs> and we went out there and it was literally one of the best shows I've ever played. And mm -hmm. I just yeah. that memory for me <clears throat> alone just fills my heart up and fills yeah. up uh, it was magic. Yeah, it was a magic yeah, happening. It was definitely a magical moment. But so if I had to throw one more club in there for me. It would probably be San Antonio, the Rock. Box. I almost said that. I almost said that. <laughs> no, too. just because, just because you know, Texas loves cold. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. do very good in Texas. Um, I left my heart in Texas. You know, there's a lot of <laughs> things there for me in San Antonio. Plus, just the people. Everything is great. You know, the venue's dope. You know, the staff is dope there. And you know, plus. They're connected with a couple other like little like side clubs at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Metal going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm a diehard metalhead, so it's kind of cool. You know, I got to yeah. meet, meet up with like you know the guys from Carnifax and everybody the last time we were there. Nice. You know, Ob Sulfur and everybody. So there's really good perks to playing that place. Can I one last? And it's one a dope ass it? venue too. <laughs> like, it's not even a venue. It's so this is a sad story, but it's funny. So I just we're in we're in uh, we're in Tampa Bay. I just find out from my mom, my grandfather died. So I'm outside, I'm crying my eyes out. Oh, you came back to that show? No, I came back to San right Antonio. Set. The San that's yeah. what I'm saying, because I remember mm. you walking up yeah. and me being like, yeah, yeah, yeah we got a boy So that was, yeah, exactly. But I, so I'm outside of this Tampa show, Rich, and you think like, I'm like, oh, I'm so sad. And I am, I'm <laughs> devastated. But I'm like sitting there like this, and all I hear is, uh, I hear, I went, <laughs> I look up at a rooster staring at me, <laughs> and I go, "What the fuck is that? Oh, what? What's God. happening?" And I hear, Parker! and there's another one. Mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by seven of them before oh anybody came out, and, and they, they were just... like, "They were like, we're here to emotionally support you, Ryan." Dude, I think they were like, "Why are you crying, bitch?" That was the Orpheum. Now, the Orpheum, so if you're curious. Those roosters have been like grandfathered into that area. Like mm -hmm. their whole thing on that area is based around them roosters. Is it? Yeah, you I didn't even know they like, existed. Rich. Yeah, <laughs> listen, if you fuck with those roosters, you go to fucking jail and you pay fines and shit. There, they have like. Did you fuck record, with those like, roosters? Yeah, no, it's it's for real. Like if you have ever noticed when you were walking down like that main yeah. street, which was just like crazy packed. Yeah, that rooster was like on so many walls <laughs> and shit. It's their uh -huh. thing. It's their <laughs> thing. Yeah. yeah. So don't fuck with them roosters. I won't. Man. That's, a, that's that's the that's the period at the end. They should they should be called "Don't fuck with the roof." Yeah, but that that was that was a good that was a good time. Yeah, that night. it was a good night. Number one tour tip: Don't fuck with the roof. Don't fuck with the roof. No matter where you're at. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Just, just, just if Don't you're about do to do it, if you're like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck the with fuck? these roosters. You got me stop. fucked up now. I know I posted the shit on that. I need to figure out where that was. Continue, Rich. I'm gonna find this for this gentleman. All right. So uh, we have a, a new album that's done. Is that? Is it? Uh, it's is it cool done. It's just it, right now. It's just being mixed. Okay. It's almost done with that. Yeah. Yes. We we so just a quick. We kind of we were gonna have the album for the tour. And then we we got our mixes back and we kind of rethought a bunch of shit. We were like, okay. oh, I, I don't know about this. So we actually ended up enlisting the help of uh, Joe from JL Studios.